Hey guys, today as part of our student grade showdown, we are taking a look at this Rhea Reese watercolor set. It should have, should have everything you need to get started with watercolor. So what do I, a watercolor comic artist, think of this set? You're going to have to watch to find out. Hello there, art nerds. I've got another installment in our student grade showdown. And not only is this an installment in the student grade showdown, but I do believe Brea Reese might be an art influencer. Today, we're gonna do a little bit of digging to find out what's going on with that. And we're going to unbox and swatch this watercolor paint kit that I picked up at Tuesday morning for $11.99. So are art supplies from Tuesday morning worth your money? Well, we've already talked about some King Art watercolors and I do believe they sometimes sell King Art over there too. Today, we're going to find out if Brea Reese, which I believe is also sold at Hobby Lobby, is worth the money. And if this art kit, which would probably be given as a gift, is worth the money that it costs, even the paltry $11.99. So let's go ahead and get swatching. Okay, so I have pulled up the Brea Reese website. I'm only really familiar with this person based on their alcohol inks. I think I purchased some of them a while back. Their homepage doesn't really have a lot going on about it. It says, artist quality supplies that inspire everyone to create amazing works of art and have fun doing it. And it looks like they have painting supplies, inks, watercolor, and drawing supplies. I don't really know how painting and watercolor don't fall into the same category, but Let's see, these are also just images. They're not clickable links. And it looks like these are links to their social media. And they have a newsletter. So they are a division of Momenta Incorporated and they are stationed in New Hampshire. So I'm not really getting like there's a person's name, but I'm seeing a lot of we's and I'm not really seeing a lot of like personal talk. So it could just be a brand name and it might not be a person at all or even an art influencer. From the day we filled our first tube of paint, our mission has been to inspire artists of all levels to create amazing works of art while having fun. Our broad range of mediums offers rich, vibrant colors that make every project look fabulous. Express your creativity and become a better artist with Brea Reese. We love seeing your work, so please show us your creations by using the hashtag Brea Reese on Instagram or by tagging us on Facebook for a chance to be featured. And their other brands are Momenta, which seems to be paper crafting, fabric crafting, home decorating, and then Little Yellow Bicycle, which is kid stuff, looks like. So not really a person at all. And then this is all links to their social media and then their other brands. So we don't really get a chance to click to see Right? Like this, this is not clicking. Don't like that. This is a very stripped down art supply website that really doesn't provide any, any real information. So, well, we checked out Brea Reese. Now we know it's just a brand handle. It doesn't seem to be attached to a person. So let's head on back to the desktop to check out the watercolor painting kit. So this kit is a bit of a mess. Like I said, I found it at Tuesday morning in this condition. It says everything you need to create this project 
or get inspired and create your own. So I would assume they might have a printed line art, kind of like the Michaels kits we've done. It comes with 12 watercolor paints, and they say professional watercolor paints. Spoiler, they haven't been. Three assorted brushes, one watercolor panel, four assorted tools, and one project guide. There's also directions and tips, supposedly on their Instagram, on their Facebook, and on their YouTube page. This is held shut by a single tape dot, which I used to like fight with these to try to open them. I don't do that anymore. We're just gonna slice it and move on with our lives. And these are looking a lot like ointment tubes, so I don't have a lot of faith in this kit. So inside we have some plastic trays, we have our plastic palette, we have our project guide, and then they call this a watercolor panel. It looks like a bad version of Canson's watercolor artboard. So it looks like it is watercolor paper laminated onto chipboard to give it some structural support. You know, I would rather this than that fake canvas stuff. So inside are tips and techniques. This is a very, very thin booklet. Now I am keeping in mind that I paid $11.99 for this, but I do believe Tuesday morning is a deal kind of store, kind of like TJ Maxx. So everything you need to create this project, I really thought we were gonna get a printed line art with this. We did not. Or get inspired and create your own. So they talk about the best surfaces for watercolor, the tools for painting and the kind of marks that they can make, a few watercolor techniques, a little bit of color theory, as well as instructions on how to paint your cone of ice cream. And that's it, it's a pretty thin instructional book. I will point out though that if you are interested in watercolor and you wanna start your watercolor journey, I have a watercolor crash course. It is for free, it's here on YouTube. It's a series of five video classes that are kind of like tutorials, but there's a lot of information in each one and they were designed to help you guys start painting with confidence. I also have way, way more watercolor and drawing and art tutorials here on the channel. So hopefully I can help you start your art journey. But for today, we are definitely going to take a look. And uh, these are ointment tubes. We are gonna take a look at the watercolors in the Brea Reset. Oh boy, these brushes are very, very cheap synthetic brushes. It also comes with a 2B pencil, a white vinyl eraser, and a small pencil sharpener. Might be magnesium. Usually, this looks kind of like a coom sharpener, but it's not labeled as such. Um, it feels fine. Um, these are the kind of inexpensive packings that a lot of companies will include to make a set seem, you know, like a fuller experience. I don't really have opinions on it one way or the other. I don't see anything wrong with it, including a half decent eraser, a pencil sharpener, and a pencil. These brushes are kind of eh, but we'll talk about those more as we get into this. So as those of you who have watched the Student Grade Showdown are already familiar with, I'm the most concerned about the paints in this set, not necessarily all the additional extras that they've thrown in. I don't really have a problem with those, but what we're gonna be taking a look at really are the paints. I mentioned earlier that these come in ointment tubes. This is actually kind of unusual for watercolor paints and um, it's pretty typical of cheaper brands. So the way these work is they have a piercer at the top and a little bit of metal here to, to keep it fresh. So not, not my favorite. It does not usually bode well. I will pierce one in real time to give you guys an idea. So normally when I'm reviewing tube watercolors, oh, oh, it's going everywhere. I will also dry them out in the half pans and see how well they reconstitute. 
I am not, I'm not doing that with these. I'm not going to waste the half pans on this one. So for today's unboxing swatch, I am going to put a little drop of each in this plastic palette and we'll swatch from there. Not really that interested in seeing how well these reconstitute. I have a feeling they're going to be about on par with Reeves and Arteza. For that, just given the fact that they're in ointment tubes, but we are going to do swatches and we're not going to do the swatches on their included paper. We're actually going to do the swatches on some cotton rag paper. Then depending on how these handle and how I feel about them, I may try following along with the project guide just to see how the paints themselves handle and just to kind of critique how well the project guide actually provides direction for watercolor painting. Just kind of giving an overview of how I feel about the kit. If I choose to do that, if these paints don't totally burn me in the swatching stage, I will use their included paper, I'll use their included pencil and their brushes. So we'll be able to give it kind of a well-rounded kit review. To the surprise of absolutely no one who has opened these ointment style watercolor tubes before, several of these tubes were explodey, which means paint went everywhere when I finally used the cap to puncture the seal. So from the get go, these are messy. You might want to have a baby wipe or a paper towel on hand. If you're giving this kit to a younger artist, you may want to go ahead and open these for them so it doesn't get literally everywhere. For the layout in their included palette, I was trying to replicate what was shown in the instructions. There's no way to actually make it match. There are too many colors in this set for actual paint wells. So I ended up kind of going into the mixing center as well, which is not ideal. Also, you can see, look at all that binder. I don't know what that is supposed to be, but it just gooped on out of there. This particular blue just really separated badly. I would suggest kneading the paints before you open them, but again, they were so explodey. I kind of feel like that might make it worse, but there's some serious separation issues with these paints. Initially, I was gonna lay this palette out as shown in their instructions, but their instructions don't actually explain anything about setting up the palette. They don't give the color names. It's just a color approximation. Some of the colors, it's really challenging to see what color that's supposed to be. And as you guys can see, there isn't even room for all the colors. So <laughs> that's already like a big no on their watercolor paint project instructions because it doesn't even line up. Like they didn't even take the time to do that. So I am going to go ahead and swatch these watercolors. Um, some of these colors have a lot of binder in them. I'm pretty sure it's not gum arabic. I don't know what it is. It kind of seems like it might be dextrose though, which is a pretty common inexpensive binder. Some of the colors, as you guys saw, separated out really badly. And by the time we removed the excess binder, we had like half a tube of paint left. And I wanted to read something to you guys that I thought was incredibly funny. It just really tickled my funny bone. These people are really hilarious. Non-toxic, professional grade watercolors, highly pigmented color. They're so funny. So these really remind me of some of the cheap tube watercolors that I reviewed from Five Below. So this bodes really, really well, but I'm, I'm going to try to be as unbiased as possible. I see the red flags. I see the warning signs. I'm going to just ignore them and just move forward. So we have 12 colors in this set, six on each row, which means for a 10 well palette like this, the instructions they provided is not really going to work, but it will work well enough for our swatches and hopefully well enough for attempting to paint along with them. We'll see. We'll see. Looking forward to that with you guys. Today, I am going to be swatching on the same paper we swatch all the time, Pinky, the Blick Studio Cold Press 100% Cotton 
Blick Premier watercolor block. So this is a cotton rag block. It should allow these paints to perform to the best of their abilities. And I'm not gonna swatch with the brushes they provided just yet. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. We're not gonna do the color mixing. We're not gonna do in the wet, in the wet, the wet into wet. We're going to actually try to paint along with the watercolor project that they suggested at in the booklet. So I'm gonna save all those thoughts and commentary for when I'm actually trying to paint along. But we are gonna do the straightforward swatches. So I'm gonna go grab one of my favorite watercolor brushes so I can be as fair as possible. And I am going to use a black Copic to put down our lines so we can test opacity. These paints handle like very, very cheap paints. The colors are really weak. There's a lot of extender or binder and not a whole lot of pigment. They might even be dye-based watercolors that have been mordant out onto something else like a chalk. And they really remind me of the kind of watercolors I found at Dollar Tree, Five Below, and Dollar General. I did a big review where I compared a bunch of watercolors from those stores. I'll link that for you guys if you're curious. But these are just, keep in mind, these are not good quality paints. These aren't even student grade quality paints. These are very, very cheap quality paints. And when you try to paint along with the kit, you're going to notice that, believe me. These haven't had a chance to dry yet, but these are really, really weak. <laughs> For what they are they just really don't have a lot of color payoff even in almost like straight from the tube full saturation there's just not a lot of color there there's a lot of extender and binder there but not a lot of color you guys can see from the way that we've got chocolate milk in the cup that there's definitely a lot of optical brighteners and extenders in there to make it seem like you're getting more paint than you actually are. While I wait for these to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and just do some color mixing just to see if I can actually get the colors to mix and to help me prepare for the watercolor project that we're going to paint along with Brea Reese. I'm going to start by laying down some stripes for the optical mixing. That's where we layer two colors, one on top of the other, to see if we can get a secondary color out of them. And it takes a little while to dry, so I like to start by setting this up and then move on to atomic mixing, which is where we take two colors and we smash them together to make our secondary color. And for atomic mixing, usually I will mix oranges, greens, purples, and sometimes Payne's gray. And I try to mix both cool versions of the color and warm versions of the color to get a wide range of mixes. I found that the atomic mixes mix really weak and I was not impressed with the ability to optically glaze. It's really kind of muddy. I have to say the color mixing does not bode well. They, whether it's atomic or optical, they mix very muted and kind of muddy. So doing the, the thing, doing the project from the project guide, we're gonna be painting this and they only use four steps for this and that always bodes super well when it's like draw a circle. Now you've got a kitty cat. That's always super exciting. So um, I'm a little nervous if you guys can't tell, but we're going to have some fun. We're going to paint along with this. You can even see from their example how scratchy that some of the colors look. But you know what? They gave me a project to do and I'm in the mood to do it. So let's get painting. So I'm going to do this in time lapse, but I wanted to read the instructions for you guys. I'm also going to have them at the bottom of the screen while I'm painting in case you're curious, but I'm gonna read them for you guys anyway. Set up. Fill the wells of your palette with pea-sized amounts of watercolors of your choice. Then add and mix water to desaturate the color. Tip, the more water you use, the lighter the color. The less water you use, the more saturated the color. Fill a few cups with water and have paper towels nearby. You will need clean water to rinse your brushes before changing colors and paper towels to blot off excess water. Three, place the watercolor panel on a flat surface. Directions. A. Lightly outline ice cream cone shape with pencil and fill in background with light color wash. B. 
Fill in ice cream cone shapes with light colors. C. Add details and shadows with darker shades of your colors. Add splatters to the background in a similar color to the original background color wash. Experiment with adding more or less water to your paint to change the saturation of color. D. Paint fine details and continue to add darker shading where desired. Add splatters to background in coordinating colors with your ice cream scoops. So A, B, C, and D. They make it seem super easy. They call it step-by-step -step visual instructions. And I mean, y'all know I do watercolor tutorials. Y'all know it ain't that simple. But let's go ahead and grab the rest of the materials from the kit because I am going to use their brushes for this. And let's get painting. So I figured why not go ahead and do the included project. So I'm going to use the materials that they supplied in this kit, which is three brushes, a pencil, a pencil sharpener, and an eraser, as well as our paper board. I am both referencing the ice cream cone they showed us in the picture, but also I googled ice cream and I'm really leaning more on what Google had to offer than what Brea Reese has to offer because their examples are tiny and not particularly clear. So once I've got it sketched in and I erased all the like underlying sketch lines, I'm going to start by mixing up some of the colors for the background. Now the brushes they gave us to use are synthetic brushes. They are very limited. They are also very small for a painting of this size. So whatever you paint, there's going to be some scrubbiness to it. I did notice that the pencil and eraser were both fine and the paper is definitely not a good watercolor paper. The paints are kind of crap but all in all I did have fun with this. It was kind of a relaxing thing to paint but you guys can see how muddy and chalky it's already acting. The paper really doesn't act like a watercolor paper. It doesn't even really act like a cellulose paper. It kind of acts like a drawing paper that they glued to some inexpensive chipboard. So just to TLDR myself, if you want to paint with watercolors, you would be really better served buying one of the student grade watercolor sets like the Mei Liang pigment sets that I've talked about here on the channel and picking up a pack of Canson XL watercolor paper or Canson Montval artboard if you don't want to have to stretch or secure your paper and a few inexpensive Royal Langnickel Zen watercolor brushes. Those are going to make you a lot happier in the long run and they're going to handle a lot better than this kit. And the instructions in this kit are terrible. I'm basically leaning on my own experience and knowledge as a watercolor artist. I've been painting watercolor comics for over a decade and I have a lot of watercolor illustration experience. I'm really leaning heavily on that as well as my experience with dealing with cheap art supplies to make the most out of these watercolors. But if this is for a younger, less experienced artist, they're gonna start experiencing a lot of frustration with this kit. So I would really recommend buying outside materials and finding a couple YouTube tutorials that really walk you through the process and recommending those. So basically I'm suggesting you do the work and put together a kit and yes, it will cost more money and more time than this kit. But if your goal is to support someone's interest in watercolor or art, they are going to be a lot happier if you do that.
as I mentioned, their directions are terrible. If you aren't already familiar with watercolor and drawing, this kit really isn't going to serve as a good introduction. But hey, you're on YouTube right now, so you know where to go to find watercolor tutorials. And while I was painting this, I thought maybe you guys would like me to put together some easy to paint together projects that aren't as cartoony as what I normally do, or as figure based. If that sounds good to you, let me know down in the comments because I am always interested in more ideas for tutorials that we can work on together. The colors in this set are really weak. There is not a lot of pigment, there is a lot of extender, so you're only going to get so much depth of color. I've been running through the colors pretty fast as well. Since they are so weak, it takes more paint to get more saturation and intensity. These kind of remind me of the Masters Touch watercolors from Hobby. Hobby Lobby that I reviewed a couple years ago. The paperboard that's provided isn't absorbent at all. So you're basically waiting for the water to evaporate off the paper and it's fairly lightweight. So it has a tendency to kind of just skid around. That said, it hasn't really buckled or curled. The brushes are really bad. Y'all keep seeing me use the flat because it's better than the larger round, which is more prone to dripping and scrubbing off paint, off layers of paint. And as we noticed in the swatches, these leave a chalky residue once dry. That is also true when you actually paint with them. Yay, mom, look, I made mud. I think I did a pretty fair job recreating what they demonstrate here in my own work and um, since these pictures were so tiny they were really challenging the reference so I just googled ice cream scoops and found a couple that looked good and just kind of worked from that instead. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of the Brea Brea not super sure how to say that name let me know down in the comments but let's talk about the pros and cons of the Brea Reese watercolor set. Let's start with the pros. At Tuesday morning, these are really pretty cheap, but even on Amazon, they're not really that expensive. At the time of this review, they were 34% off at $12.42. And the set comes with pretty much everything you would need to get started. You get your paints, you get an eraser, you get a pencil, you get three brushes, a pencil sharpener, and a plastic palette as well as a sheet of, they called it watercolor canvas. It's really very cheap watercolor paper that's been laminated on a chipboard, but it's enough to get started. So that leads us to the cons because yeah, you get everything you need, but it's all really, really cheap. The project instructions are super lean. If you don't already know how to paint, this set isn't going to help you much. There is not really much in the way of information, tips, or tutorials. So if you don't know how to paint and you're not willing to look it up on YouTube, you, you would prefer to work from written material like a booklet, this booklet isn't going to help you. And these don't really handle like watercolors are supposed to. They handle a bit like... Um, just kind of like a weird cross between very cheap gouache and very cheap watercolor. Honestly, it was kind of like how the Arteza acrylic paints handled. I was using some of the same techniques for that. It's hard to explain if you're not familiar with watercolor or you're not familiar with nicer, even nicer student grade watercolors like the Mei Liang pigments. These are just really weird. They're very opaque and chalky. You guys can see what I'm talking about, it's, it's not like a real rich opacity. It's just like a milky chalkiness that comes from all the optical, optical brighteners and extenders that they included to kind of stretch these paints out. So what's my final verdict on the Brea Reese watercolor kit? Realistically, this is not a good set of watercolors. I wouldn't recommend you go out and buy this set. But kind of like with the Michaels watercolor kits that came with the pre-printed line art, I actually ended up having fun just kind of noodling around with these watercolors and just enjoying the painting process. Sometimes working with bad art supplies frees you up to just make because you figure it's not going to turn out 
good anyway. It's not going to turn out as anything you'd be proud of or want to show to anyone. So you can kind of just let that go and mess around. And that can be really freeing, especially when you're like me and you've gotten kind of caught up in the social media grind of feeling like you always have to make something that you can share online and then dealing with the disappointment of it not getting the reception that you'd hoped it it would get. Things like this, as ridiculous as the ice cream scoop turned out, it's freeing because you can just paint for the joy of painting and it doesn't really matter how it turns out and it doesn't really matter what other people think. And that's one of the things I really want to inspire in myself and inspire in you guys and inspire in people who may not think of themselves as artists, that the love of making art doesn't necessarily have to do with loving what you've made, but simply the process of using your hands and your intelligence to create something that didn't exist before or didn't exist in that format before or just practicing taking the world that you see, the three and four dimensional world that you see and bringing it down into two points into the two dimensional world. There's a little bit of magic there and sometimes it can be easy to forget that but it's always nice to be reminded of that. So are these watercolors good? No. Would I recommend them? Not really, especially not considering I've reviewed a lot better watercolors in the student grade showdown. But did I have fun painting this brightly colored ice cream cone? Yeah, definitely I did. Am I glad I spent this evening doing this? Actually, yeah, I'm kind of surprised by that. I'm actually glad that they kind of presented the materials and a prompt and then I spent the time doing it. Am I proud of the art that resulted? It's all right, but it's going to fall apart real fast with the materials that I use to make it. I can't give it to anybody because it's going to fall apart. So, you know, I'm not exactly proud of it, but I'm not ashamed of it either. And I think the time was well spent and I'm glad I spent my time doing this. So it wasn't a total bust. So that was the Brea Reese watercolor set. I was, I was not super impressed. The paints themselves are very, very chalky. They really don't feel like the professional grade paints that the package itself promises. And they're just kind of not impressive. I did have fun though, using the paints, the included art chip board and the pencil and the brushes to paint this illustration of an ice cream cone. Would I buy this set for someone else? No. I would probably, instead of getting this set, go for the Mei Liang pigment set and include some Canton watercolor paper and some pencils and some inexpensive synthetic brushes. And I think that would be a better painting experience and one that would last someone longer than this kit here for around the same price. I paid $11.99 for this kit at Tuesday morning, but I do believe it's probably more expensive if you bought it full price. But the fact that I found it at Tuesday morning means you're probably not going to see this exact set. Now I'm pretty sure Brea Reese white labels products from other manufacturers. So that makes it more challenging to review because I can't just say skip all of Brea Reese's watercolors because they may decide to buy some from Superior and white label them and those would be fine. But these two watercolors here, when you see them in these little ointment tubes like this, I would recommend skipping them. They really remind me of watercolors I've purchased at Five Below, Dollar Tree, and Dollar General, and those are way cheaper than this. So I hope you guys found today's review to be helpful, useful, and informative. I hope you guys had fun. I had fun painting with you guys. And I hope to see you guys again in the near future. If you'd like to check out more of my art, you can follow me on these social media sites here. If you like what I do and you want to see me do more of it, make sure you leave a big old like. 
click that subscribe button and hit that bell notification to let YouTube know that you want to see more from me. Reviews like this one are made possible with thanks to my amazing patrons on Patreon. You can find me at patreon.com slash natosoup. Once a week, I release a free newsletter that compiles everything that I've been working on that week, everything that went live, as well as a little bit of a blog post. So if you're interested in seeing what I'm working on and you enjoy blog style writing, you can always follow my Patreon for free to check out what I'm working on. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope to see you guys again really soon. Bye!